Kids Rock Line, and we're live and nationwide. I'm Bob Coburn. Your number to call is toll free 1 800 222 Rock. That's 1 800 222 7625. For many rock and roll radio stations, Heartbeat City by the Cars was the top album of 1984, and it's still going strong in 85. Now, guitarist Elliot Easton is chasing his own success with the release of his, release of his first solo work, Change No Change, and Rockline welcomes Elliot Easton. Nice to have you on tonight. How you doing, Elliot? Great, Bob. How you doing? I'm doing terrifically tonight. I, you know, I, it's, it's good for you, but I suppose if you waited for Heartbeat City to subside completely, your record might have never come out. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's the problem. I mean, I was sitting on it since the beginning of the Cars tour. <laughs> that's when I completed it. <laughs> so it's been, what, six, seven months? Mm -hmm. My goodness. Waiting, yeah. Well, congratulations on the success of both, uh, commercially and artistically, in Heartbeat City. And uh, we'll find Thank out you. as far as commercially on your solo record, but artistically it's very, very good. And you'll hear it tonight as we play songs off of that. I'm knocking, I'm knocking fake wood on this end. <laughs> I'll find some real wood. Why the title, Elliot? I'm not sure if I understand it. Change, change no, no change. Change, no change? Why not? No, uh, basically... It, I mean, Don't do that, please. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't do that to you, but it's... I, I don't know. There's a song on the album called Change, and initially we were going to call the album Change, and I decided on Change, No Change, and it just seemed like uh, you could you could interpret it in a bunch of different ways, and uh, it made some sense to me at the time, and i had been thinking about just that fact about how much things seem to change, how little they really do. Well, that's maybe part of, partly what it was for me. I couldn't figure out exactly what it meant because it probably means a whole lot of different things, and the lack of punctuation really leaves it open. If you put right. commas well, and things in there, it would make would make it mean one specific thing. But I, I think the ambiguity leaves more to the imagination, if anything, and it can mean a whole bunch of different things to different people, hopefully. This record is really well produced, and you can check it out right now as we play a song from Change No Change by Elliot Easton. This is Like a Wheel on Rockline. Like a Wheel is the name of the song. Wearing Down Like a Wheel is the full name. Part of it is in parentheses, subtitle. Uh, Elliot Easton's first solo record, Change No Change, and we're going to play more of that this evening, and hang on for it. It's interesting. It's very, very good, too. We have uh, Kara on the line. She's in Long Island listening to WNEW 1027. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hi, Elliot. Hi, Kara. What really part of Long like Island? I the new album, especially the song, Tools of Your Labor. Oh, thank you. Um, you my must question have, uh, is... How can we chose to do a solo album, and how is it different from doing a Cars album? Uh, I didn't really choose to do a solo album. It kind of chose me. A buddy of mine named Jules Shear, a real good friend that I, I work on various musical projects with, started coming over to my house with his acoustic guitar, and we'd just sit together and write songs just purely for the fun of it. And uh, after a while, we had about 20 songs, and we said, well, what do we do with these songs? Should we get other people to record them? And start a publishing company or what should we do and he said well why don't you sing them and I said oh that's an interesting idea okay I'll I'll sing them so I went into the studio and I did six songs and uh, my record company liked it very much Electra Records and and uh, said well let's go ahead and make an album out of it so I it was it was a very unpremeditated thing it just kind of developed naturally into becoming an Elliot Easton album it was really began as just writing songs for the fun of it Jules was in a really good band a few years ago, too. Jules and the Polar Bears that some of our listeners might remember. And, uh, Kara, um, Elliot had a question for you. What part of Long Island are you on? Oh, <laughs> uh, Oh, well, I'm from Massapequa. Are you kidding? No. Nope. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's old home week on Rock. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Let's go to Cleveland this time around to the North Coast. WMMS. Robert, you're on the show. Hey, Elliot. How you doing, Bob? How you doing, Robert? Doing just great, guy. You know, I really admire some of your work. Um, you're an excellent guitarist, and uh, I'm all of 19. I graduated from Shaker in the class of 84. And I'm really amazed that your sound from the studio to live is almost perfect. And I was wondering how did you guys make amends in the studio to keep it simpler on the road? Uh, it wasn't that simple on the road. We almost had to move everything except the recording studio out on stage. And we really retained a lot of the technology that was used in the making of the album to reproduce it live. Uh, for the most part, that, that, that was the case. You know, I got to read some article, Elliot, where it tracked what you did through a car set. And you start one song on one guitar that's played through one amp, then it goes to another one. That, you wouldn't believe this. It was like a road map of how to drive across the country. There were so many changes. How do you remember all of that? Do you, do you use cues of some sort, or does it just after doing it over the years, you remember it? Well, I've been working with the same guitar technician uh, for 
every Cars tour, I guess, seven years or so now. Wow, we're getting old, aren't we? <laughs> and uh, basically, it's just an attempt to uh, get the right sound for the right song. So it doesn't really require that much technical thought. I know what I'm, I'm looking for, and I just grab that guitar because I know what I need for that song. And he knows what I need, and after a few shows, we kind of have it worked out. That's why you're up there playing it. <laughs> Let's go to Fargo. It's Eric on the line listening to Q98 FM. Hi, Eric. All right. Hi. This is Eric from Concordia saying hi to A to the South. How's it going, Elliot? Pretty good, Eric. How you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Got a couple questions for you. Fire away. Yeah, what is there any significance to your Heartbeat City uh, album cover? Is there any significance to it? Like the uh, green duster on it? No, it's a painting. Uh, that that cover was a painting by an artist named Peter Phillips, and and it was just printed in its entirety. And I guess he. Uh, painted it at the time when that car was a, a contemporary model. I got a question for you about Heartbeat City. How come Breakaway was not on that album? We're about to play that song. Well, we had quite a few extra songs uh, during those sessions. We probably recorded 12 or 13 songs, and, and, and it was not the easiest thing to do to eliminate certain ones. Um, Really, really, it was just trying to pick what we thought were the best ones. Maybe we were right, maybe we were wrong. Um, people seem to like Breakaway a whole lot, so maybe it should have been on the album. But it's kind of fun to get something on a single that you can't get on an album. and So it's been, you know, an enjoyable thing. It's the B-side of Why Can't I Have You? And this is The Cars with Breakaway on Rockline. <laughs> That's Breakaway by the Cars, and again, it is not on Heartbeat City. It's the B-side of Why Can't I Have You. We'll take a brief time out and return with Elliot Easton and more of his solo work on Rockline and the Global Satellite Network. Call us toll-free, 1-800-222-ROCK. Coburn with Elliot Easton from the Cars and Elliot Easton solo artist. We have a call from Lakeville, Illinois, listening to Milwaukee's uh, WQFM. We have Mike on the line. Hi, Mike. Hello, Mike. Yeah. How are you there? Um, I just seen your concert um, this summer at uh, Papa Creek in Chicago. Right. Was right, great. right. I got a couple questions for you. Um, well, let's hear them. I'd like to. Uh, I like to know who's in your band for your solo album. I just heard the song and it sounds really great. Oh, thank you. Well, it'll be different musicians touring than than played on the album. Uh, I, do you want to know who will be touring with me? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because you can easily find out who's on the album by just looking on the back, so I'll tell you who will most likely be touring with me. A um, few people you might have seen with David Bowie and, and a few other people. I'll, I'll be sharing the uh, guitar duties with Earl Slick. And, uh, yeah. And uh, Carmine Rojas will be playing bass, and Alan Childs will be playing drums, and keyboard players to be announced at more at 11. <laughs> we don't know yet. <laughs> We're not sure who the keyboard players are, but we got together a couple of weeks ago a a here in New York a at a rehearsal soundstage and played together just to see how we liked it, and it felt great. It felt great, so we're gonna. I think I'm going to use those guys. When's the tour start? Just a rough date. Hopefully uh, in, in May. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Does that take care of everything with you, Mike? Uh, yeah, can you just uh, say hi to my friend Dan? He's probably listening, too. How you doing, Dan? Thanks for the call, Mike. And Dan, <laughs> from Fort Worth, we have Christy on the line. She's listening to the zoo in Dallas. Hi, Christy. Hi, um, Elliot. I'd like to say I love you so much, and you're the greatest. Oh, you're and, sweet. Um, <laughs> I'd like to ask, how come that you've never sang lead on any of the Cars albums? And I'd like to ask when your birthday is. Um... Okay, why didn't I ever sing lead on any of the Cars records? We were just talking about that before we were on the air. Basically, there's no real policy reason. It's just that we have two strong lead singers within the band. And, uh, you know, being, being things the way they are, the band has a very strong identity and a certain chemistry to it. And uh, the Cars are what they are by the people fulfilling the roles that they do. And in the cars, I play guitar and do background vocals. And uh, on my stuff, I sing. And as far as my birthday, it's December 18th. 
Thanks, Christy. We appreciate it. We're going to talk to Frank now. He's in Pittsburgh, and he's listening to WDVE, and he's talking with Elliot. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Hello, Frank. Uh, I want to know, um, <laughs> in your song, Pulls Your Labor, off your, uh, your solo LP, you talk about uh, the, the lyric, one lyric, four, he lived with four girls in a garage up in Shadyside. I want to know if you were referring to Shadyside in Pittsburgh, maybe if you lived there or something like that. Uh, you hit the nail on the head there, buddy, but I never lived there. Really, but that's what it's about. You got the right neighborhood. I'll be darned. Good shot there, Frank. That one stuck on the Excellent wall. Excellent shot. Excellent shot. <laughs> We're going to listen to Tools of Your Labor now on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. Tools of Your Labor by Elliot Easton on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. We'll go right back to the telephones. We have a call from Van Nuys, California. It's Jim, and he's listening to 95.5 KLOS. How's it going, Jim? Pretty good. How about you? Pretty good. Hello, Jim. Elliot. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, when you go out on tour, I was wondering if uh, you would be playing any of the uh, Cars material. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, no, I won't be. <laughs> that's not that's not a that's not a, a a gesture of hostility. It's just a, I don't sing lead on any of the Cars tunes, so it'd be a bit awkward, wouldn't it? Yeah, you got a point there. Thanks for the call, Jim. We have a call now from Atco, New Jersey. It's John. He's listening to Philadelphia's YSP. You're on, John. Yeah, hello, Elliot. Hello there. How you doing? I'm the Cars' biggest fan, probably. You know, and I've seen you in concert in Philadelphia, July 16th. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah, with the volleyball or beach ball. You call them beach. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, you, were the, you, were the, you were the guy, huh? Yeah, no, that was me. I was up a little bit hot, higher. Okay. But anyway, will you be making any videos? Yes, in fact, I just did one for uh, the first single, Wearing Down Like a Wheel, and it should be on your screen any day now, probably within a week. Anything else on your mind tonight, Jen? No. All right. Peter Wolf album was pretty good. Yeah, the, the guitar on that, that, that was pretty Pardon good. Pardon me? I'm sorry? He said the Peter Wolf album was good, and you did some oh. guitar work on that. Oh, thank you very much. And that Pete was... Pete was great to work with. Is that covered, John? I, apparently so. I'm trying to give him every benefit of the doubt here. We're going to take a call from uh, Atlanta, and this is Perrin. He's listening to 96 Rock. How you doing? Hi. Hello. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. Same to you. <laughs> um, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, number one, um, did any of the cars help you out with the uh, album? And number two, why didn't you come to Atlanta? Uh, to answer your first question... Uh, for the for the sole purpose of of making a record that was going to be different than a Cars record, I didn't uh, didn't use the other guys. There are times I would have loved to, but I chose to use other musicians specifically so that it would sound different. Uh, reason that we didn't come to Atlanta is we had a scheduling problem, and our whole southeast leg of our tour got amputated. So unfortunately, we didn't play Florida or Atlanta, and uh, sorry about that, but I'll come down there and play for you, okay? I'm chuckling at how you put that. Was there any specific reason why the tour got cut short? <laughs> uh, God, not, 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 a, not a very, not really, no. It's just a matter of logistics and... All those silly things that I don't concern myself with. You know, Elliot, you handle the vocals surprisingly well. And I say surprisingly because I've heard you as a background vocalist, but not as a lead vocalist. Did you ever consider bringing in a singer to work with you on the album? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, the, the plan from the beginning was that I would, I would be singing the songs and, and Jules would be doing the background harmonies. And that's precisely the way it worked out. And it worked out pretty well. We'll have another result of how it worked out after a brief time out on Rockline. Some more rock and roll from Elliot Easton Solo coming your way. And some more telephone time with Elliot on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network. Rockline Live and Nationwide, I'm Bob Coburn with Elliot Easton. This first solo record from Elliot is a diverse record with all kinds of different types of sounds on it. There's a bluesy type tune on there and some, some straight ahead rock and roll songs. This one's a bit popish, and this is called Shayla by Elliot Easton on Rockline. <laughs> Oh, 
Wide. I'm Bob Coburn with Elliot Easton. We have a call from Philadelphia, and listening to WYSP is Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, how you doing, guys? Good. Hello, Dave. Okay, um, I'm a fellow guitarist, of course, isn't everybody? And uh, I was wondering... Let's hope not. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, who were your influences? Who made you start playing guitar? Uh, well, there's a difference between who my influences are and who made me start playing guitar. I started when I was three years old simply because... Uh, I saw Elvis Presley on television, and it just blew me away. I mean, it was way hipper than Howdy Doody and the Mouseketeers and, <laughs> and, the other, and the other stuff that was on, or, you know, the McCarthy trials or whatever. But there was something that just magical. I was galvanized by the sight of this guy with a guitar, and immediately brought my mother a comb and a glass of water and had her comb my hair in a spit curl and got my Mickey Mouse guitar out and started rocking out in front of the mirror and uh, haven't changed too much since, actually. <laughs> no, and I mean that, I don't mean that facetiously. There's a certain magic about what originally makes you fall in love with rock and roll that if you can hang on to that, you can, uh, you got something going. Now, you said there were two aspects and one is Elvis. What's the other? Well, that, that, that was just the initial image of of a guy with a guitar and just being a little kid you know barely conscious that it 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 made it made an impression on me uh as far as guitar players who had impact on on my style and playing uh probably first off the the surf guitar players from the pre british invasion stuff like the ventures and stuff like that and all the all the surf instrumentals like apache and pipeline and perfidia and all that kind of stuff and i used to play that stuff when i was around 9 or 10 years old i had a little band played in my backyard and uh after that of course you know the guys from england came over and and it was all over i mean Forget about school, forget about anything, uh, you know, there was no question of what I would be doing for the rest of my life. Uh, and it just grew from there, you know, I just, well, what happened after the, I guess, the, the, the big blue scare of the late 60s? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> And and what I would do is I'd read interviews by people people like Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck and those people and they and they would they would cite in their influences and and I'd I'd go back and and buy the
listen to the other guys because you can form your own opinion and, and stand a better chance of developing your own style if you're not emulating second hand. Thank you for the call there, Dave Front. Next week on Rockline, we will not be discussing the great blues scare of the late 60s, but instead we'll have Deep Purple on in an exclusive live radio appearance, so tune in for that, definitely. And if you want to get in touch with us, P.O. Box S, Tarzana, California, 91356. Thanks to everybody for the calls, and thanks to Patty Smythe, and to our New York production team at 1027 WNEWFM, especially Maria Carcitti, Dave Vander Hayden, Steve Goldsman, and Dan Carlisle's Night Service. And to you, Elliot, thanks for being here, and thanks for the great rock and roll. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bob. All right. Glad I, to do it. I'm BC, and I'll be seeing you in a week. You've been listening to Rockline, brought to you in part by Budweiser, the king of beers. Our associate producer is Mark Felside, executive producer Howard Gilman. Rockline is produced by Cindy Tolan for the Global Satellite Network.